Tonight on Crossfire, Senate Democrats take drastic action to help President Obama get his way. We've seen an unprecedented pattern of obstruction in Congress. Is what they're calling the nuclear option good for either party or the country? If you like the rules of the Senate, you can keep them. <laughs> on the left, Stephanie Cutter. On the right, Newt Gingrich. In the crossfire, Senator Bernie Sanders, who voted for today's rules change, and Senator John Hoven, who voted against it. Going nuclear, will it help the country or hurt? Tonight on Crossfire. Welcome to Crossfire. I'm Newt Gingrich on the right. And I'm Stephanie Cutter on the left. In the crossfire tonight, two senators who voted on opposite sides for today's rules change. Before we bring in our guests, let's go to CNN's Dana Bash. Dana, can you put the so-called nuclear option in plain English first? This is kind of complicated. It is, and I think the best way to describe it is in practical terms, what it means is that unless one of President Obama's nominees is truly controversial, he or she almost surely will get confirmed as long as Democrats are in control of the Senate. And the reason is because what Democrats did is they changed the rules so that... Uh, a 60 vote threshold for nominees to get through to overcome a filibuster. It is now a 51 vote threshold, a simple majority. Uh, now, the reason it's called the nuclear option is because uh, the shoe is not always on this foot. Democrats, as you well know, Stephanie, are uh, often in the minority, not just the majority. And so this could come back to haunt them uh, when Republicans are in charge of the Senate and at the White House. Thanks. Thanks, Dana. Let's take a minute to turn back the clock. In 2005, I ran the campaign against the nuclear option when I worked for Senator Reid. Back then, Republicans were the ones threatening to go nuclear so they could get President Bush's nominees through. In the end, Democrats accepted a deal that put some of today's most conservative judges on the bench. And Republicans agreed not to pull the nuclear trigger. But today, Republicans won't make a deal. Throughout U.S. history, senators viewed the filibuster as a last resort, used only in extraordinary circumstances. Today, Republicans view it as a first resort, leaving Harry Reid no choice, listening to him explaining his decision. So this is not just about Republicans versus Democrats. This is about doing what is right for this institution to evolve and remain responsive to the needs our country has, and we have not been doing that. Newt, I, I am sad and conflicted about what happened today. I'm a believer in the United States Senate. I believe it's the deliberative body. Uh, but I also believe that, that it has to work for the American people. And I think this, the actions that the senator took today, that Senator Reid took today, was on behalf of the American people to make the Senate function. It's not functioning. Well, I think it's interesting that the Senate, which after all has passed a number of important things this year, wasn't functioning for the president on his terms. And this is one more step to give President Obama even more power and even more control. And I, it's interesting to me that every Democrat who's up for re-election next year, except one, voted to give President Obama more power. And I suspect that will come back. But we'll debate that in the next few minutes. We will. In the crossfire tonight, <laughs> independent Senator Bernie Sanders and Republican Senator John Hoven. Uh, Senator Sanders, you served in the House. And I think what struck me, I think this is a very historic vote. I don't think this is just a tactic. And if you watch the president's press conference today, the entire opening of the press conference is a litany of legislative problems. He doesn't get to the appointments until after he goes through layer after layer of legislative problems, which signals to me he intends to unwind the entire filibuster by the time this is done. Doesn't it bother you some that the Senate as an institution is so suddenly changed towards a House-like institution and that one of the great defenders of slowing things down just disappeared? It does. But I think the problem began a lot before today. The problem began the day after Obama was elected, where the Republicans very clearly made an unprecedented decision that they will do everything that they can in an unprecedented way to make sure that he accomplishes as little as he can. Reid made the point today that in terms of presidential nominations to the, the ju judiciary and to the administration, 168 times since this country was founded, half of those filibusters, that opposition took place since Obama was in office. Newt, when Lyndon Johnson was the majority leader, he had to deal with one filibuster. Harry Reid has had to deal with over 400. In your opening remarks, you said that the Senate has accomplished some good things this year. That's just not accurate. We've done virtually nothing. This country faces enormous crises. 
Our Republican friends have made the United States Senate dysfunctional, and on behalf of the American people, we've got to get moving. Well, listen, the, the first appeals court justice ever filibustered was under George Bush. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact is, they got to a nuclear option once before, which I thought was very dangerous, under Bush, not under Obama. So, I mean, I understand why both sides are being part of it, but the Senate is now permanently changed. But here's the point. If your point is to have the Democrats done some of this stuff, the answer is absolutely. But I have the Republicans taken it to an entirely new level. That is simply the reality. Senator Hovind, on, on Senator Sanders' point, you're moderately new to the Senate. You were elected in, in 2010. 2010. And over the last five years, since President Obama was elected, the number of filibusters have risen dramatically. Let's take a look on the screen. 82 of the 168 blocked or filibustered presidential nominees have occurred under President Obama under this Republican minority. Is that why you came to the United States Senate? You're not even making substantive arguments against these people. You're just blocking. Yeah, but the reality is that the change that the, uh, the Democrats made, and really this is Obamacare too, they passed Obamacare with only Democrat votes, and we've seen how that's worked out. So now to take the focus off Obamacare, we have in essence Obamacare too, where they change the rules, they break the rules to change the rules with only Democrat votes. This is not going to work. We need bipartisanship, and if you look at presidential nominations, President Bush had more of his nominations held up. We've confirmed more of President That's Obama's not nominations true, than, to the than, uh, than in the case for President Bush. But so do again, you think that out of, uh, nominees judicial, are bipartisan? Just let me think. Judicial yeah. nominations out of 215, 215 judicial nominations, We've turned down two. Where's the advice and consent if you have to go 100 percent or that's not good enough? Yeah, actually, the President Bush at this point had 91 percent of his nominees. We're in the low 70s. No, no. And if you look at all the nominees, it's it's over 99 percent. Go back and check. Talking about judicial nominees. Of course, yeah. But if yes, you want to take all actually, nominees. Which is actually very important. We have confirmed over 99 <laughs> percent. Where's the advice and about, consent if you can't turn down somebody sometime? You're talking about bipartisanship. Yes, is, that, is it an act of bipartisanship to block for just the, the sake of blocking? Over 99% confirmed, and you're saying we're blocking? Half the only, the only unilateral uh, uh, partisan action here was to change the rules. 100% Democrat votes, just like pushing through Obamacare. Let, Obamacare. let me just <laughs> jump in. John and, John and I are friends. We get along. We are. John, Chuck Grassley, who is the ranking member of the Judiciary Committee, mm -hmm. said that he thinks we should not appoint these three new nominees because the court is not busy enough. Mm -hmm. He thinks that Obama is, quote unquote, packing the court. Does this pass the laugh test? Everybody knows that he's upset. Let me finish. He is upset that Barack Obama is actually appointing people who are sympathetic to what Obama believes. Uh, clearly, Obama is the first president in history. Bush never appointed anybody. Sure. So, it is such an absurd argument that clearly what Chuck Grassley and the Republicans are saying, look, there are three nominees who are not going to be conservatives. We don't want them. We're going to stop them. Senator, let me respond to that. When the uh, Republicans, uh, or the, the Democrats did the same thing when uh, President Bush tried to put people on the D.C. Circuit Court. So the Democrats did the exact same thing when the position was reversed. Second, there isn't enough work for the, the current uh, members of that court, let alone continuing to add. Third, uh, Senator Grassley has a bill to remedy it. Why don't you work with us on a bipartisan John, basis to address the underlying on. problem? Let's not be, I mean, I really think that does not pass. You the know, all three test. of those are just coincidentally, oh. Just coincidentally, these are Obama's nominees, and you've decided that the court is not let busy me, enough. Just coincidentally. Let me, let me, no. let, let me further push the laugh test for a second. Okay. I, I just can't resist, because <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, as you know, uh, I like having you here, and I, th I think you're, you're always very candid and come at angles I don't think of normally. Senator Cornyn said today something that I think sort of fair. You're talking here about a fight over three D.C. Court of Appeals judges. Maybe sooner or later you might have to get to a nuclear option. Senator Cornyn said he actually thought, faced with two weeks of going home to talk about the total collapse of the Obamacare system, that in fact this was a kind of a good thing to turn and have a new argument. Uh, what was it that made it necessary, literally the day they're going home for the thing, to bring it up today? I, I think this has been talked about. I think the Majority Leader Reid has been talking about this for, for quite a while. Uh, and he wanted to get it done today. But let me pick up on another point, which, which you mentioned. You said, 
is this laying the groundwork for something even more, going to the legislative issue? So let me be very frank with you. That's exactly what I believe. I believe that given the fact that unemployment today in this country is much, much too high, that we need to raise the minimum wage, that we need to create millions of jobs, what we have seen in the last three or four years, Duke, is in the Senate we have gotten over 50 votes for a decent jobs bill, for some environmental bills, for bills that protect women against job discrimination, to protect the high cost of college education and, and make sure that college loans are affordable. We've gotten over 50 votes, but we can't pass anything. You mean like student loans, which was bipartisan? You mean like the farm bill, which no, was bipartisan? No, I mean bipartisan? the student loans. No, like no, no. A lot of resource development, no, the which ones was that were passed. You mean like immigration, which was bipartisan. The passed? ones that were we passed. Can't? Wait a second. The Bipart student loans that were the bill that was passed was a much worse vote, worse uh, bill than the one that uh, could not get. Well, but votes. isn't that the point? from a partisan standpoint but from a bipartisan standpoint it passed with a very large well, vote. the question I mean, is why we couldn't get any republican okay. votes to pass something that was we're, significant and really would have helped we're going to come back to that but i think i've found three of the best people to make my case to senator sanders who passed the laugh test who opposed the nuclear option next we'll hear from barack obama hillary clinton and harry reid when we come back Welcome back. In the crossfire tonight, Senators Bernie Sanders and John Hoven. It's been an incredible day in Capitol Hill, and the U.S. Senate, as it once was, may have died forever. The Founding Fathers realized that your opinion changes when your relative power changes. Filibusters helped make the U.S. Senate what they called the saucer that cooled the hot coffee coming from the House, and that was by design. As of today, that's changed forever, despite earlier warnings from three prominent Democrats I'm sure you're going to recognize. If they choose to change the rules and put an end to democratic debate, then the fighting and the bitterness and the gridlock will only get worse. The filibuster is far from a procedural gimmick. It's part of the fabric of this institution we call the Senate. So this president has come to the majority here in the Senate and basically said, change the rules. Do it the way I want it done. You know, Senator Sanders, when I listened to the president today expand, and, and you were honest a few minutes ago and said probably you're going to expand the elimination well, of the filibuster. Like I don't know what no, but, but I think that's going to happen. What I was reminded of was when in moments of passion we sometimes knock down institutions that were designed deliberately. And I've thought back to A Man for All Seasons, and we got a brief clip that I just think is interesting as a warning about what, ha what started today. So, now you'd give the devil benefit of the law. Yes, what would you do? Cut a great road through the law to get after the devil? Yes. I'd cut down every law in England to do that. Oh? And when the last law was down and the devil turned round on you, hide, Roper, the law's all been flat. This country is planted thick with laws from coast to coast, man's laws, not God's. And if you cut them down, and you're just the man to do it, do you really think you could stand upright in the winds that would blow then? And, and I guess what I would ask is this. Because I mean, many times in my career, including when I was Speaker, we'd be told, oh, you can't do X, you can't do Y, you'll never get through the Senate, don't even start down that road. If the Republicans win in 14 and come back and win everything in 16, and in January 17 say, you know, here's all this stuff that's grown up over the years, we're going to get rid of all of it in 90 days, as we did at the contract, we're going to vote through all of it in 90 days. When we did it in 95, we then collided with the Senate and the Senate rules. Doesn't it worry you a little bit that we are in the process of taking down one of the great defenses against popular will? It does. But, Newt, again, the point that I would make is the key action was not taken today by the Democrats. The key action was taken by the Republicans who made a decision that in an unprecedented way they would obstruct virtually every initiative that Obama and the Democrats brought forth. I know Harry Reid. Harry Reid is an institution guy. He loves the Senate. He's been there for a long time. He's not happy about doing this. He is doing it because I've seen him privately. And he's said, you know, I'm so frustrated. Nothing is happening. The truth of the matter is our country is hurting today. People are outraged that even on a simple thing, I don't know that John has particular objections to these three nominates, nominations to this court. And that's just one small part of the problem. Virtually every initiative that comes up, look, 
A few weeks ago, we were dealing with our Republican friends in the House who shut it down because they had the bright idea that they wanted to end the funding of Obamacare. They went too far. You're seeing that same practice taking place in the Senate. What Reid has done is respond to that, try to bring back a level of functionality in, Senator, in the Senate. Senator, if you would respond to this, we're working on the defense authorization bill right now. Right. That has always been an open amendment process. But instead, uh, Leader Reid has got a closed process. We can't even offer an amendment. How in any way, shape, or form are you going to get a bipartisan bill if you won't even let the minority offer John, and vote on an amendment? John, Jim Inhofe, correct me if I'm wrong. Jim Inhofe, who is the Republican Managing leader the on press, defense, correct. right? Mm -hmm. most, one of the Absolutely. most conservative guys in the Senate. Trying to get some amendments for All right. And Jim said, as I understand it, we've got 25 amendments. The Republicans were given 25 amendments. The Democrats were given 25 amendments. Inhofe said, that's good. And yet we couldn't get Republican support to go forward with 25 amendments. He came and said he'll try to get 25 amendments. So far, we've gotten, what, none? No, my understanding... One, one vote. No. One vote. No, 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 okay. no. My understanding is there is there has been an agreement, 25 plus 20. Give you another example. Look, Energy wait, efficiency. But look, bill. here's the bigger issue. It. Here's the bigger issue. You, Back to anything that passes the Senate still has to go to the House, doesn't it? Yes. How are you going to get a bill through the House if you don't get a bipartisan vote to do it in the Senate? You've got to work with the L Republican Party. You can't unilaterally change, break today. the rules. To Senator Hoven, if there was an effort to find a compromise over the judicial nominees and the administration's nominees, right. like was done in 2005 when mm -hmm. Democrats accepted what we would consider some pretty conservative nominees, and they were proven to be very conservative on the bench. We accepted them in order to avert the nuclear mm -hmm. option. Would you be part of that compromise? Absolutely. You know, look, we worked uh, just a few months ago. We all went into the old Senate chambers. We had a long dialogue. We actually came up with some changes. We approved a number of nominees. But look, so would you any, accept the, the any compromise? DC Circuit Steph nominees that are before the Senate now. Again, you said work out some kind of compromise. I'm happy to do that, but it, it can't be the kind of thing where this last arrangement. We went through, we approved a number of nominees, and now they're coming back and saying, look, unless you approve every single nominee we put in front of you, we're going to change the I don't rules. think that's what the question is. How about this, then? Let's say <clears throat> what Newt is predicting, mm -hmm. that uh, the Senate flips in 2014, which I don't think will happen. Uh, <laughs> I think it let's might. say that it does. You'll be in the majority. You've never been in the majority before. Right. Would you work, being in the majority, to, see, to change the rule back? I think one of the things you've seen from Republicans today is we're not saying what we do because what we do needs to be in the so best interest of the American people. No, at this point, we're trying to determine what should be done here. Just like when they pushed Obamacare through with 100 percent Democrat votes, and now they're wondering why they, the, the public won't support it when there was no bipartisanship, no coming together and trying to figure out something that could work. They do the same thing now with the Senate rules. What we're saying is, no, if we get the chance to be in charge, uh -huh. we need to think this through and figure out what does work. And that does mean so understanding you're not even, it's got to be bipartisan. You're not even, you voted not against it today. You voted against the nuclear option today, yes. but you're not even sure you would continue that vote if you get into the majority. You're not even sure you would restore the rules no, you that you asked supported me what today. we would do when we get control. Right, I'm saying we're going to think through that in a very measured way and come up with something that works for the American people and get some good results, not a uh, partisan unilateral action. Stephanie, we don't know. Maybe the Republicans will gain control of the Senate. Maybe they won't. You and I hope that they won't. We do. Uh, we're kind but of what we, they do. But what we <laughs> have learned what we have learned is that in those states recently where Republicans have taken control, like Wisconsin and other states, they have used the rules in the most extreme ways imaginable, going out of the way to make it hard for people to vote even. Change the rules. Now, this is Doing a... gerrymandering. We, every, gerrymandering has gone on since... Senator, now this is a very so, interesting argument saying, okay, so in your opinion, did it wrong, so it's okay for I you. can't predict. I, I, You're I'm right. No, John, I, John I didn't say that. All I'm no. saying is if you look at what you guys may say, we're not going to do what they did in those states. Maybe you will. I'm not saying you won't. But I am saying that we are looking out there right now when Republicans have had control. Okay, Man, gonna, have they used their power. We are going to go to break. We're going to come back to this. So stay here. Next, we have the final question for both of our guests. We also want you at home to weigh in on today's fireback question. Do you think that dysfunction in Washington is curable? Tweet yes or no using the hashtag Crossfire. We'll have the results after the break.
We're back with Senators Bernie Sanders and John Hoven. Now it's time for our final question to each of you. You know, I was proud to work for a great icon of the Senate, Ted Kennedy, who was known for his bipartisan deal-making. But there are lots of icons on both sides of the aisle. Howard Baker, Bob Dole, Bob Byrd. Tell me what you think they would be thinking today if they were here in the Senate dealing with the nuclear option. Have those days ended? Is, is this curable? You know, Stephanie, I, I think Robert Byrd, who was in the Senate for, you know, one of the longest serving senators in the history of the Senate, I, I think he, he's probably turned over in his grave. I mean, he was somebody who understood that to, to break the rules means you have no rules. Um, to, uh, another uh, Democrat who I didn't get to work with but had immense respect for, Mike Mansfield. He, I've heard story after story about how when senators came in, Republican or Democrat, he made sure they had their say, they had their ability to offer an amendment, brought them into the mix, and created a bipartisan atmosphere. Bernie, let me ask you. We were told for the last month that no matter how bad the website got, the president couldn't fire Secretary Sebelius because he'd never get a nominee through the Senate. Now, doesn't today clear the way for the president to fire Secretary Sebelius? <sighs> uh... I'd rather answer Newt. Stephanie's question. Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was yeah. a better question. No, I, 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 I like uh, Sebelius. Uh, you know, clearly the role ha has been terrible. But to, to get the, to uh, Stephanie's question, I think it is a sad day. But it's not just a sad day. It's been a sad year when a country faces so many problems and we are doing virtually nothing to address those problems. When we see filibuster after filibuster, we are dealing, the scientists tell us, and John, maybe you agree with me, maybe you don't. The global warming is one of the great right. planetary we're, we're crises. Have you guys come back? Well, we have All the right. tyranny of the clock. So I want to thank <laughs> Senators Bernie Sanders and John Hoven. Go to Facebook or Twitter to weigh in on our fireback question. Do you think dysfunctional Washington is curable? Right now, 58% of you say yes, 42% say no. The debate continues online at CNN.com slash Crossfire, as well as Facebook and Twitter. From the left, I'm Stephanie Cutter. From the right, I'm Newt Gingrich. Join us tomorrow for another edition of Crossfire. Aaron Burnett out front starts right now.